Delighted to be joined by Simon Story, the Chief Executive of Derbyshire County Cricket Club. Simon, very welcome to Hi, you today. Hi, um, Just um, first up, just describe your role here mm. as the Chief Executive at the club. Well, I mean, the Chief Executive is, is effectively, I'm responsible for all of the operational matters as they relate to both the cricket club in its uh, first class cricket status, but also increasingly as we move into a conference and events venue 365 days of the year. So I report through to a supervisory board, which is in the traditional members elected style, albeit recruited against specific job titles. So they would be the supervisory board, but I head up the executive team and the staff that, uh, that work here at the cricket club. And cricket is going through some massive change mm. at the moment. What's your vision here for the mm. club now? Well, we've been, we've been very clear. I mean, right from when I started in, in 2012, for me it was important to understand what our role as the cricket club was because obviously that's going to govern all the decisions that, that you make and, and, and where you want to take that organisation on a, on a five-year timescale. So we, were, we did a lot of work in, in, uh, in talking to both the ECB, which is our governing body, talking to our local stakeholders within the, within the city, whether it was our members who ultimately um, effectively own the club and responsible for governance, talking to the committee of the time, talking to the local authority, um, the city council, the county council, and a lot of the governing governing bodies in sport. So, And it was very clear that the role and the remit for this cricket club from an ECB perspective is to develop the next England player to represent Derbyshire on the international scene and the last one the last player we actually produced in Derbyshire was Dominic Cork which is now over a decade ago and uh, and we really are whilst whilst we do have a remit obviously to do our very best in first class cricket and win trophies it's all designed to provide players with a launch pad to a successful in England career and that as a first class cricket club is really our remit but the exciting thing about in in doing that role is that we can really fulfil a much broader remit which is use the power of sport to inspire the community and to and when we bring success to uh, to, to Derbyshire then it really does mean that uh, we can really fulfil that remit which goes beyond just um, winning cricket games but it starts with winning cricket games and that's what we needed to start doing. And you've got a pretty clear strategy going forward mm. for the next five yeah, years or yeah, so. Yeah. Just, what are the sort of key tenants? Well, I think, it, I think I, it's best described by we're running, we're running effectively two businesses and we have two propellers that are propelling this business forward. The first propeller is really our reason to be here, which is to win cricket matches, to compete for trophies, to create an England player and bring success to the county and inspire the, the county on that basis. And that, and that really is funded to a large extent or part funded by the, by, the, by the ECB and the money from cricket and the broadcast deals. But we know that we are still dramatically below the, uh, the amount of investment that we require in, in, in producing those young cricketers. Uh, to give you an example, the total, there's a salary cap for cricket, which is, which is unusual, obviously different to football, in that the total amount of budget that you can invest on your players and coaches is £2 million in, in a year on your total squad. Um, when when uh, myself and Chairman Chris Grant started, we were running at about eight hundred thousand. So you know, at least half below um, what we what we what we could could be spending. We're now we've now been able to through a combination of both revenue generation and cost cutting, been able to invest and prioritise um, one point two million pounds into cricket coaching and development, which has made a measurable difference. And you know, we made our first Royal London quarter final last year. 2012 we we got promotion to division one and we continue to invest in coaches and players so we know that we've made progress but there's still a gap between 1.2 million and 2 million we're probably round about 16th in terms of the amount of money that we're investing in in our cricket budget and so so we need to increase that which is really where the second propeller comes our first propeller is is creating and developing new new players and and, and people will come and watch but actually our future revenue stream is going to be the second propeller, which is the conference and events and wedding venue, which we have an amazing asset here. We're so fortunate we've been able to invest a, a million pounds to create a 300-seater conference centre. Now, the revenues from running that business will all go to reinforce the cricket budget, but we have to realise that to develop and deliver an amazing experience in the conference and events centre, we have to do it in a, a unique way, which is unique to Derbyshire cricket, but also in an extremely professional and elite way, 
because people will judge and will only come back if their experience is good. So those are the two key revenue streams that we're having to, we're maintaining the ECB revenue stream, which will make sure that we can maintain our playing budget. To grow the playing budget, we have to build our conference and events business. And you know, we, with the launch of the, of the new facility here, we've been amazed by the response from the, the, the Derbyshire business community and further afield to, uh, to the, the new opportunities people have now to host something here at the county ground. You clearly love being in Derby and the Derby community. What mm. would you be saying to businesses who are thinking about locating in Derby or mm. Derbyshire in the big benefits well, of this I mean, part I, of the world? Well, I, I've, I've been fortunate in that, to some extent, I'm a fresh pair of eyes that have come from, from I was actually outside the UK and, and I was brought up in, in Essex in the south southeast of England. So so I'm kind of fresh to Derby, although I did, I did study in the East Midlands at Loughborough. And I've been amazed, surprised and fascinated by, the, uh, by why, what Derby has to offer. Um, and, and part of that offering in terms of a sporting and culture offer is something that we can provide. But, I mean, it's the assets that, that Derby has, it's a little gem. Uh, and, and in many senses, I don't think we do enough to, to really talk about those, those items. And, and I know that we get a lot of publicity around the planes, trains and automobiles, but it's all the heritage that underpins that, which is equally interesting, whether it's the silk mill. We've got a terrific um, Joseph Wright collection in the museum. We've got the Peak District on our doorstep. I mean, it's a it's a terrific it's a terrific place, and there's some key businesses located here as well. I mean, I mean, most people just think Royal Crown Derby is a brand, but it is Royal Crown in Derby, and I think it's another it's a, it's another great partner of ours. And I think these are the assets that we have, and these are the assets that uh, Derby should be should be really uh, shouting about.